they're off. They race away over the mile then. Palace Pier and Frankie Dottori have the advantage. It's a two-length lead for Palace Pier. Races towards the line, and Palace Pier is the winner of the Queen Anne. Obviously today, as I said, slowly run race, straight mile, and Frankie could put him anywhere he wanted, and he hit the front early enough, and then he thinks I've done enough, which is exactly what his father used to do. This is wide open. Berkshire Shadow in the red and white flying home as well. Berkshire Shadow and Ashim Murphy have won. The pink jacket of Oxted is running off. Oxted now coming through with Kieran Fallon to take it up and beats Arecibo to second. Words can't describe it. I mean, I'm walking on the moon. Didn't think this day would happen, so, uh, no, fantastic. Poetic Flair, who has shot clear inside the final furlong here with Kevin Manning. He's been busy, he's very talented, he's very tough. Poetic Flair has won in great style. Just travelled so easy into the race, and when I asked him to pick up, he's, he's put the race to bed in the matter of strides. He's an unbelievable horse, and uh, Jim has done a fantastic job to, to reproduce him and all the staff. to turn him up here today after, after three quick runs, you know. It is Rashoon who's battling away here. MC Muldoon is now flying down the outside. It's Rashoon and MC Muldoon. Here comes the line, Rashoon. Juan Elcano is getting much closer to Patrick Sarsfield. Juan Elcano and Andrea Rizzoli getting to the front here. And for Kevin Ryan, it's Juan Elcano that comes home to win the Wolverton. Amtiaz has just got to the front inside the last furlong. It's Amtiaz and Holly Doyle. Amtiaz and Dubious Affair, Amtiaz and Holly Doyle. An amazing performance by Amtiaz. He's only small, but he's a little terrier. He, you know, he gives you his all, and that's what you need. Take the pressure off now, and hopefully I can get some more. And they're off in the Queen Mary stakes. Twilight Gleaming and Quick Susie, the first two, heading towards the last furlong. Artos over on the far side, and Quick Susie has taken the measure of Twilight Gleaming. And Quick Susie and Gary Carroll have won the Queen Mary. She jumped well, and for every step of the way, I was just waiting. She actually got to the line well, but she's a very good filly. And it's Kamari and William Buick with the commanding advantage in the Queen's Vars. Kamari is still in front by two and a half lengths. Wordsworth staying on powerfully, but Kamari is clear and wins the Queen's Vars. Great race, and I mean, he really quickened up well, which he, it surprised me how well he actually quickened. He's just improved. Indy Angel, the near side, running home strongly for Dottori. It's Indy Angel and Frankie in front here, and Indy Angel has taken the Duke of Cambridge. They're off in the Prince of Wales' stakes. And Love is coming up to the line. She sends Ascot head over heels. A special filly has won, Love. They're absolutely delighted. Um, often when you prepare them and don't run them, it, it can be a little bit tricky for them. So we knew that she was ready to run, but not cherry ripe today. So uh, we were delighted. The white cap of Real World has gone to the front on the far side. He's flipped clear of that group. Over the far side, Real World with the white cap has the lead. The yellow cap has choking the near side, but Marco Gianni and Real World have won by many lengths. He was traveling really nicely at the four halfway there. He just started getting on the bridle pretty well, and I thought, oh, he got probably a good chance, but I didn't expect he win that easy. Over the far side, the red jacket, it's Chipotle. They're wide across the course. Bon Chairman finishing very fast near side, so is Dick 2. Chipotle there, the far side won it. Once again, you and Eve have teamed up. You're such a solid partnership. Yeah, she's incredible, isn't she? Yeah. Um, brilliant trainer. Very good to me. It's quite emotional. She's, she's very, very good to me. Laura Pearson, Lola Showgirl still has the advantage as they race inside the last 100 yards. Lola Showgirl led the whole way. Just incredible. I knew she half had a chance today. and She's a very strong contester, but I never dreamt that it was actually going to happen, especially on my first Royal Ascot ride.
they're off. They race without number four instinctive move. Straits of Moyle very slow to get out of the starting stalls. They wide across the course. Here's perfect power as well as they hit the line tight. Perfect power. Absolutely thrilled. I was lucky to be back here at all, really, after the accident. So um, just to be back at Royal Ascot, I'm so chuffed. Mo Harfeth and Jim Crowley in front, leading by over length. Mo Harfeth is clear, though, and wins by two. The horse came good too far out, really, and then was left in front a bit. But uh, he's, he's got a nice turn of foot, and on quick ground, he, he'll continue to be quite dangerous. The now loving dream has taken it up. It is loving dream inside the last furlong. Loving dream and Robert Havlin in front and have won the Riversdale. She's a filly that likes to use her stride. She, she kept finding, she actually quickened from the four to the three and then just kept finding, 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 and very gutsy performance. Stradivarius only has two behind him into the home straight. Here's Stradivarius against the rail. He's in fourth position, he's in third position. Subjectivist Joe Fanning stole the race, heading into the home straight. Subjectivist wins by a good distance. Yeah, it was great. He sort of travelled well, got a nice lead. I was always comfortable and I always was confident I'd win, you know. He's like the best horse now lately I've been riding, so it's nice, you know. On the stand side, Perotto has come through to challenge Quintillas. And it looks like the stand side, Perotto from Quintillas racing up towards the line. Perotto hanging on Liffey River, diving. Perotto, Liffey River. The horse was going as far as he's ever gone. He hit the line, he's a tough horse. Royal Ascot is the right place for things to happen and uh, thrilled to get another winner on the board here. Surefire is running a massive race, just hanging in though into Nagano. As they race up towards the line, Surefire from Salamarak, Surefire has won it. It's a massive leap forwards from, from years gone by and I'm massively grateful for the opportunity have been given and glad to be making the most of it. Highfield Princess on this near side. The Highfield Princess, the last one into the handicap here, is bursting clear. It's Highfield Princess from Daniel. Highfield Princess wins from Daniel. Racing goes ahead. And they're away for the Albany Stakes. Sondrine comes through on the far side of Hello You. Sondrine from Hello You, but it's Sondrine that gallops clear to win the Albany. Yes! She's very hardy, and I think she's got great attributes. She relaxes really well and gets into a good rhythm, and she really was relentless and galloped really nicely to the line. Here's Alan Kerr, very quick to challenge and Alan Kerr has struck the front. What a great attitude this colt has got. Alan Kerr follows up his classic trial win at Sandown. I was just really happy with the rhythm that he found and I always felt like I had loads of horse to go for, so on was an upwards for him, no doubt. Dragon Simple on the near side, on the far side, Campanelli. She's digging deep! Campanelli and Dragon Simple, they pass the post together. Placings are revised. Wesley Ward has won the Commonwealth Cup. It's never nice winning a race in the steers room in these kind of conditions when you've taken across about eight lanes, got nudged three times, lost my momentum, I got beaten ahead. It was a good effort by Campanelli. Alcohol Free came to take it up from November, but it's Alcohol Free that has kicked away in the hands of Ashi Murphy and wins the Coronation Stakes. It's special, and obviously, to do it for you know for Jeff and Dave Bow and the team at Littleton and all the team at Kingsley. You know, to have two on a day is a huge testament to what they've they've put in, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a bit of fun tonight. I think. Samud in second place, Messidor in company with these, but there's one thing for certain, they will not catch Create Belief. Look at this, she's five, six, seven lengths clear. Create Belief has hacked up. 
It was a great feeling. She jumped, she travelled so easy. She only came on the bridle at the two and I gave her a kick in the belly and she took off. Um, unbelievable feeling and uh, can't thank Johnny and the owners enough for sticking with me on the big days as well. Quick thorn nearest to us though, with Oshin Murphy has taken it up. And then Raymond Toss with the red cap has moved through to take second position. Behind those in fourth place is Miran, but it is Quick Thorn and Oshin who win. He settled into a beautiful rhythm. He uh, gave me a brilliant ride. I just felt at one with him the whole way around. He was chilled out and thought he was very well handicapped, but you never know coming to ask it. Significantly and Clifford Lee have the advantage late on. Most the leader in second position. Boom Shalar in yellow coming very strongly late on. Significantly Boom Shalar, dream composer, most the leader. I'm over the moon. The boss has given me some great chances and he's put me on some nice horses and to give him first where that's what went on. I'm just delighted. Chesham Stakes. Reach for the moon and Point Longsdale just drifting left. They run inside the final 50 yards. Reach for the moon and Frankie Dottori. But Ryan Moore getting up on Point Longsdale. Everyone's always been happy with this horse and everyone always thought a lot of him, uh, Haley. So, um, no, it, it's um, unusual for an Australia to be that forward mm -hmm. um, and with a pedigree like his, which is a middle distance pedigree. Running on very well is Rhythm Master, and so too from the back of the field is Far Dream as they come up towards the line. Creative Force in the centre under James Dahl. Creative Force won the jersey. It's been a long week. I was quietly confident about this fella. Obviously, it was a difficult decision for William. I mean, I think they were both priced up as joint favourites at the start of the week. So, um, yeah, tough decision for Will. Wonderful tonight in front, Groom is gaining on the outside, but wonderful tonight, a superb winner of the Hardwick Stakes. I thought that performance today against Colts, this was her best performance yet probably, and she showed a turn of foot today, which, uh, which I don't think she's shown before. Dream of Dreams and Glenn Shield from Art Power. Happy Power, Garris is running on. Dream of Dreams this time has won the Diamond Jubilee at the third attempt. Delighted because the horse deserves it. The last three years he's been beaten ahead, finishing fastest of all. So I'm really thrilled for him. The action on the far side, fresh down the centre. Rohan, the three-year-old, is doing best. What a performance. Rohan wins the Wokingham. Delighted for his new owner and for David Evans. It's been a remarkable story, really, with the horse. And um, I had the easy part. Yeah, I'd like to say the rest is history. Fox's tail's now veering, violently left-handed, but out clear by three lengths. And Fox's tail goes on to win. And Oshie Murphy will be the leading rider at Royal Ascot 2021. It's special because as I've got older, I've appreciated these days more and more. And I know I'm only 25, but life, as we learned this week, is, is precious and uh, it's a continuous reminder. Stratton begins the power clear, three lengths clear of calling the wind. And Ryan Moore will end the week on a winner here in the Queen Alexandra with Stratton, who clears away.